All righty. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're calling from. Welcome to Introduction and Now Support. Uh, we are so glad that you are joining us today. Um, it is a global audience, so uh, we definitely going to have folks here from different parts of the, different parts of the world. Uh, but we're just again excited that you are here. Before we get started here, um, just want to just present our help safe harbor notice here. Uh, this just simply states you don't have to read the whole screen, but it simply states that everything that we share here in this presentation is based on information that is currently available as of today. And so today's session is actually part of a live on ServiceNow uh, event. It is the live on ServiceNow events are really curated events that really help you connect to ServiceNow experts and peers and help you to deploy your products and services um, to achieve value faster. Now you can see on the screen here um, where you can click on the QR code or scan the QR code um, or use the link that I'm going to put in the chat here. And this will give you access to all the upcoming events that we have uh, in the future here. So just like you found this particular event, we have tons and tons of other live events um, here at ServiceNow. So definitely check that out when you get a chance. Just a few housekeeping rules before we get started here. Um, number one, we're going to have a Q&A session at the uh, end, end of this uh, presentation here. Um, so throughout the throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A option to ask any questions that you have, um, and or you can type those in the chat. Number two, this is a recorded session and post this event. This will be on our ServiceNow community website so that you can download and access it along with the deck that we're sharing today. And finally, feedback is a gift here at ServiceNow. And so we are going to send you out a survey post event so that you can provide us any feedback um, as we just continue to iterate and improve upon these sessions. So. Who's this guy that's been talking to you here for the last few minutes? My name is Marcus Gray. I am a learning solutions and delivery lead. Short for that, I'm a facilitator uh, here at ServiceNow within our support organization. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming our guest and co-host, uh, Anneldy Leaf. Anneldy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. <laughs> how are you? I am actually pretty ecstatic. Um, so today is release day. I'm sure you're obviously aware of that. Um, and what that means here at ServiceNow is that we have launched our latest family release of our platform uh, called the Washington DC release. And I'm even more excited, as you can see in my background here, um, I actually am in Virginia in the Washington DC metro area. So needless to say, I've been waiting for this release for the last a couple of years. Who's counting, right? Uh, so cool. But hey, Annaldi, you're one of our senior leaders here in, uh, at ServiceNow. Tell us about what you do uh, in your role here. Certainly. Uh, my name is Annaldi Leaf, and I am a senior director with our customer service and support organization. I am currently running the global uh, ITOM support team, which is one of multiple uh, product support areas that we have. And this is probably my fifth team um, in my almost 10 years here with ServiceNow. So I definitely a big proponent of the ServiceNow platform. And I believe that I, even as we've had challenges over the years, it's still one of the best support organizations um, in any enterprise organization um, that I have been with. So uh, really great to be here and uh, excited to tell you more about uh, our support org. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for just sharing that about yourself. I guess I should have said I've, I've been on a couple of teams here within support and uh, primarily with our support account management uh, and now in our support operations. Uh, but that's enough about us. Let's actually make this a little bit interactive here and get to know a little bit about our guests. Um, so I am going to put a poll out there uh, for you all. And here is the first poll. Whoops. Uh, Not this. Yes. <laughs> Let's go back. Is it out there? Yes. Did you want the self-service one? No, not that one. Try that one. 
Let's go back. All right. One second here, guys. Here. Maybe yeah, this one. Let's try this one. This one here? Got uh, it. Uh, Don't worry, folks. We'll ask you the other one later. <laughs> uh, let me relaunch this one here. All righty. Here we go. I'm going to relaunch this poll here. All right. So for the folks that are on the call here, which role do you identify with? Uh, system developer, system administrator, platform owner, or business leader? Righty. Uh, I think most people here are, okay, one business leader. Cool. Awesome. I think that's a pretty good consensus there. All right, so most folks here are system administrators. Awesome. This is good because uh, when we get a little bit further into the uh, presentation here, we're going to be talking about our now support portal, um, which I think that most of you may be familiar with, um, but definitely a lot of features that you all and your role will be able to take advantage of. Cool. I'm going to end that there. All righty. Ready to get started? So here is our uh, agenda for today. Um, we're gonna give you an introduction of ServiceNow support. We're gonna tell you a little bit about our approach and how we approach support. And primarily we're gonna introduce you to our Now Support portal and all the features. And then beyond self-service, what does that look like? Um, and how do you get support there? And then we're gonna wrap up with a Q&A and a question, uh, excuse me, Q&A and wrap up and key takeaways. How's that sound, NLD? Sounds great. All righty. So we're going to get into introducing now support. So in support, we have a very unique structure where our customers, uh, where our customer service and support organization, CSS, our global, global cloud services, and our product teams all are part of this unified engineering uh, organization. Can you tell us, Anneldy, why is this? why does this matter and what are the benefits uh, of this approach for our customers? Sure, Marcus. There are several benefits with this approach. Uh, for one thing, all three of our groups have common goals and there aren't walls between the different organizations. Our teams freely talk and work together quite closely, especially through the platform. And that means we are all aligned to your success, all three groups. The product, the success of our product uh, development team it's tied heavily on the number of issues that they can help reduce. So that includes minimizing product defects or PRBs, as we call it in the ITIL world. Um, all three of these groups report up to the same leader, our chief technology officer and SVP of DevOps, who has also grown up with ServiceNow um, from development and has worked very closely with our uh, customer service and support organization and our global cloud services. So... I love that we have that uh, type of relationship with all, uh, both of our companion orgs. I myself am in the customer support org. So having the same leader and the same goals makes it so much better for our customers. That's cool. I'm so glad you shared that just about how they all work together. And um, I think at, there's a point in this presentation where we'll kind of talk about, uh, we'll see that relationship kind of in action here. So that's pretty cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so as you know, we are a global organization with many support centers around the world. Um, tell us about these different support centers, NLD, and uh, what your customers know about them. Yeah, so we have, you know, we didn't always start with so many. It We used to be, uh, we all, of course, started in San Diego, uh, which is our original headquarters and where we were founded. But over the years, we have grown into these different site centers. And that's because that helps us meet our customers where they are and help us to get into uh, the regulated markets and serve those customers as well. Um, you'll see that we also co-locate our support centers with our site reliability centers, and you can see both uh, federal support centers and our language support center in, for example, Tokyo uh, does have a language support as, uh, and then of course you see some of our regulated markets. Um, our Dublin site, for example, also takes care of our EU support, and our Sydney, Australia site takes care of our SPP Australia regulated market. Cool. 
that is a lot of uh, a lot of centers um, and a lot of places that we're around, around the world, which, you know, we are a 24 by 7, 365 day uh, support technology management. Um, so we don't we don't sleep. <laughs> we don't stop. We always want to make sure that we're available for our customers. But this has to be a pretty daunting task. Now, how are we actually able to uh, to do that? Yeah. So we do, as you mentioned, we do offer a follow the sun model with live agent support, uh, 24 by seven by 365, which means I'm working some of those holidays, of course, uh, on standby for critical issues. Now that would be our priority one and priority two business critical issues or significant issues. And those are worked by multiple engineers, uh, 24 by seven, if requested and needed. Um, because we want to provide relief to our customers. For our non-critical cases, those are the priority three and priority four levels. They're generally worked by the same engineer or group of engineers in a single region. And so that we can be with you and you know ask questions as needed. So because of that, we always recommend that you ensure that your preferred hours of communication are current so that we can have those discussions with you, uh, making sure that everything that we're doing uh, passes muster with you and you know that if we have to request approvals or uh, work with you on something that we are available so yeah i love that yeah follow the sun um definitely making sure that we are doing pretty good case handling to be able to transfer those uh, uh those cases around the region just to ensure that support just continues uh for our customers i love that um all right, so that's a little bit about us, about the support organization here. Let's kind of talk about our approach, um, how we actually how we actually approach support, um, and kind of our practice around that. So we do a lot here in support, right, to assist our customers, to take care of our customers. But I think there are a few things that kind of fall out of the purview of support, um, where other teams at ServiceNow can uh, can help our customers. Can you describe for us, Anodi, what kind of support we provide for our customers and what are the differences between what we consider in-scope and out-of-scope services? Sure. So customer service and support is what's known as a break-fix organization. It means our primary focus is on fixing out-of-the-box product issues. So in scope services means fixing platform application functionality, whereas out of scope services mean assisting customers with implementation or platform functionality or how to customize out of the box or trying to uh, solve things that have been customized. So for customers who need that level of service, they can work directly with our professional services team or visit our ServiceNow Create site. Uh, you're going to find some step-by-step delivery guidance based on real world experiences and proven leading practices there on those sites. Um, also with our professional service, you'll find prescriptive methodologies, success packs, and other assets to aid in successful implementation. That is, uh, that's pretty cool. So regardless of whether, um, it's suffice to say that whether it's in scope or out of scope, our customers are definitely going to receive the support they need, correct? Yep. And uh, yeah. And uh, what is uh, what's one of the what is the best way if uh, if something falls necessary somewhere out of the scope of, you know, break fix, what's the best way for customers to really get more information about these professional services? Sure. So I would start by contacting your account executive and you can go from there. They can point you in the right direction. Um, some, you know, service service now's customer support uh, and and services organization uh, will oftentimes try to at least isolate where or what the customization that might be uh, having issues and we can refer you to there. Or if you already know, you can go straight to your account executive. Cool, cool, awesome. So we have uh, uh, quite a few packages here uh, for our support, um, for our support organization that's available to our customers, and they each kind of have a little bit of a unique customer experience. So can you tell us, Emily, what are some of the differences between the packages? Also, what's actually consistent across all packages? Sure. Uh, the support packages range from base to total. In our base package, the coverage focuses heavily on self-service and the support coverage is limited to 5 by 12, which is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. local time. 
uh, the customer's local time. In addition to self-service, the guided, advanced, and total packages all have 24 by 7 support coverage, and the advanced and total packages have impact squads, which consist of a customer success manager, support account manager, as well as a platform architect assigned to the account. All customers, regardless of the support package, receive 24 by 7 coverage for any priority one business critical outages. So there you go. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, that That's good to know that if, you know, regardless of whatever support package I have, if I have a, a very critical, severe outage that I'm going to get support no matter what, 24-7, correct? Correct. Okay, that is good to know. Now, it's important um, that we know, okay, these are the available packages, but how, let's talk about how uh, customers should expect to hear back from us. What do the response times look like once they actually engage support? Yeah, and as you move from base to total, you'll see that the response times adjust to the to a customer selected package with advance and total having the quickest response times. This structure is repeated through all the priority levels from P1 being the highest priority to a priority four. Uh, it is important to keep in mind that these times represent the first response target and not resolution. So in other words, these are the times that we are committing to initially respond to a customer's request. And the way I like to think about it is that's when we commit to get the paramedics there, not to finish your heart surgery, for example, if that was needed. So <laughs> yeah, so definitely focusing on triage and, uh, you know, responding and providing that customer service um, to let them know like, hey, we got your response. We're on it. I'll be um, there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. All righty. Sounds good. Um, all right. So let's kind of let's kind of move here. And I, I love to kind of go to this portion here, um, which is kind of really the, the the meat and bones of 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 this particular webinar here. And it's really about this uh, now support portal. Um, and so we're going to talk about this now support portal. Um, but it's really uh, you know it is a ecosystem of our support tools, technologies, and content, so that our customers can really find the answers that they need as quickly as possible. I love this statement here. It says, now support portal is the best way to experience support here at ServiceNow. Um, so how do we how do we get there, right? Um, so our now support portal essentially is, again, like I said, our home for, your home, I should say, for self-service help, support, instance, user management, um, and so much more. But before we get into that, um, here's where our next poll is, which I think we might have inadvertently sent a little bit early here, but how many of us actually uh, self, uh, self-serve? self So let me just throw that out there now and just kind of get a consensus here. Um, here we go. All righty. So how many of us actually self-serve? Do you use it? Tried it? Do you don't like it? Nope, never tried it. Um, or what is self-service? Okay. Cool, cool. All right. So we got a couple of people here that, that like it. They love it. Um, some people have tried it. Not too crazy about it. It's okay. And we have a couple of people who have never tried it. Awesome. Awesome. So we have a wide, a wide range here. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll here. All righty. So how do we get to the self-service portal? Really simple. It's www.support.surfacenow.com. And if you want to follow along, definitely you can type that in. Uh, be sure to bookmark that page um, so that you will have it uh, readily available when you need it. We're going to... Uh, we're going to dive into this here. All right. So once you log into the portal here, um, this is going to be what we call your landing page. So for instance, if you need to ensure the security and health of your instances by viewing information or scheduling clones or activating plugins, uh, this is your place. If you need to manage upgrades or keep your instances up to date, this is your place. If you need to manage cases, changes, users, or key contacts, this is your place. 
So I think it goes without saying that this is your place. And I think this is a good time to actually call out. Uh, there's a KB article um, in the lower right hand corner of the screen. You're going to see a, a, a banner like this on several screens as we go throughout this uh, portal tour here. Um, and really, it's just letting you know that there's additional information related to the topic that we're covering on the screen. And also that these KB references will be included um, at the resource section um, at the end of this deck. All righty, let's get started here. I'd like to kind of start and focus on the instance dashboard. So the instance dashboard, you can get there by clicking on instances and clicking instance dashboard. Analdi, tell us, what are some of the activities that customers can do here? This is where you can see real-time status information like uptime, your current version, your scheduled upgrades, and changes or cases against a given instance. Using the Actions tab, for example, uh, if you want to click there, you can take actions against the instance as well. Awesome, awesome. Uh, anything about these particular actions you want to add or share? Yeah, I think these are what we find is that our customers use find these super useful to be able to manage their instances and all without having to necessarily talk to anybody. Um, and we find that our customers really love that ability. Great, great, great. Yeah, this instance dashboard is, is is really cool. Again, you'll get to see all of your instances and perform management functions. For those of you that are system administrators out there, um, you know, you have the ability to, to perform these functions. Um, so this is definitely a good one-stop shot to kind of get that holistic view of all of your instances. Um, the other place that I wanted to touch on really quickly is the maintenance center. Now, the maintenance center is a dedicated place for customers to really view, track, and engage with, with their maintenance communications on the Now Support portal. And when you go in and you click on uh, you know, all your records, this brings up all your different uh, comm records or communication records. So, Andrew, tell us, what's some of the information that the maintenance center is going to display? It's going to display the most recent communication records for maintenance on your instances. So um, that may also include patching or the upgrade program records. Um, it's going to have communication records that need your attention or action. Yeah, awesome. And why is this feature like so important for our customers? Well, for one thing, it helps our customers and allows them to stay in the loop on recent communications and scheduled maintenance, uh, especially directly from this Now Support homepage. Um, that means our customers can easily see the communications that require action from them and allows uh, customers to ask questions and acknowledge important messages. All of that from within the communication record. So it is; it can be interactive as well. We do have a team that monitors uh, those communication records. Yeah, definitely. Full team that run, manages the comm records. And I think it's also uh, important to call out here that um, you'll notice that the comm records are different from case case records. So all COM records will begin with C-O-M-M. -M. That's how you know that that's a particular communication. And again, it's a way for you to action and acknowledge and, and just make sure that you're aware of what's going on um, or any advisories or anything like that uh, impacting your instances. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I think we got the lay of the land here of just kind of getting into support portal, but let's actually talk about how customers can really get the best out of their support experience using all the features in the self-service. So to get there, if you're following along in the portal, once you log in, in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see an option that says get support. And when you click on get support, brings you here to another landing page um, and we're going to kind of tour through this uh, particular landing page, but Analdi, since I know we have some customers here who have never used this before, or this is their first time seeing self-service, what would you recommend as uh, a place to start to be kind of begin the exploration of the portal? So if you are new, I'd get to, I'd go to the get to know now support uh, to that area. And there are three resources that will give you information on how to get started. Clicking on each of those resources will bring out a side menu of additional options. Yep, as you can see there. In the Getting Started section, you can learn about Now Support or get access to our Now Support mobile app. 
what I like about this section is that the now support onboarding checklist, uh, sorry, what I like about this section uh, is that checklist, and that's where you can check off key tasks that will help you ramp up as a now support user. In fact, some of those checklist items, we're going to cover that in today's session. Um, and then using uh, the using now support section uh, it focuses on how each of the key roles uh, can use now support from, you know, from an administrator uh, role to a partner role. And then lastly, in the My ServiceNow section, this is one of the places where you can manage your profile, account, and preferences. Wow. So that's pretty cool. So you're saying this is the first time, if I'm a first-time user, um, there's a place dedicated for me to be able to kind of you know, get that checklist, understand what I need to do so that I'm pretty much set up for success once I get into this portal? Yep. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. Awesome. So- I think it's safe to assume that our customers, you know, know what a knowledge base is. Um, it's a collection of easily discovered KB articles that cover various topics um, that are connected to the platform. But what's equally important is, and if not more, is how we use our knowledge base. So let's start with access. How can customers search our knowledge base? Well, customers can use the search box under how can we help oh, right there highlighted in green. They can ask a question or do a keyword search, or they can view the entire knowledge base by following the link in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, not only does this search our knowledge base, but also searches as our pro product documentation and community posts that are related, uh, especially for the desired topic as well. So here's ServiceNow, right? How do we actually manage our knowledge base? Ah, great question. So we started some time ago uh, when we were growing that we recognized that we need to utilize KCS or knowledge centered support. And we did this entire effort across our entire support organization. And it's been in place for several years now to manage our knowledge bases for our customer. And what that means is that our engineers, our support engineers, ensure that content is relevant and created or updated as they're investigating and resolving cases. Uh, where in fact, so not so breaking news, but uh, uh, over the over the months and the last several years, we've probably already been going into the AI. So you're gonna you know hear about that AI buzzword quite a bit, um, but even using that to help generate articles, and that's something that our customers will be able to use as well to create content from cases. So we do encourage our support engineers to write articles while they are resolving issues to proactively assist with future issues that other customers might have. And we make all of that available to you, our customers. Awesome. And what's the benefit of the approach for our customers with, with this? Well, it means that uh, for our customers, articles are regularly refreshed with the newest and most accurate information. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. So everything's up to date. And I just want to mention that, you know, we have over 40,000 relevant articles and our knowledge base really is the, and I say knowledge base, but when I say knowledge base, again, it's inclusive of product docs and community posts and internal knowledge bases, but it's the backbone of information. Um, and it gives you a lot uh, to really work on when it comes to, or really use when it comes to resolving your cases. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so back to our landing page here, there's a list of frequently used resources on the left-hand side. Um, now, we're going to spend the next few moments here exploring these resources, and we're going to start with patching and upgrades. Um, so with patching and upgrades, it's a major task for our customers. Speaking of which, we had a new family release today, um, so it might be on the, uh, the, the top of somebody's mind. But really with patching and upgrade, it really enables our customers to get the most value out of ServiceNow by taking advantage of the innovation available um, in the new family releases, um, which are over 150 new innovations that I learned about in the Washington, D.C. release today, um, and receiving the latest security performance and functional fixes. So, Anody, what are some of the key takeaways our customers can get from this section? Yeah, so here, as you can see there, we have information about, on our patching program, our end of life upgrades and fundamental information about patching and upgrades. There are a few things you can learn here. 
For instance, there is a video on how to upgrade an instance. Uh, this is where we describe the process for planning, testing, communicating, and applying a ServiceNow instance upgrade. This information can also be found in our product docs. Uh, what is also cool is you can self-schedule a patch or upgrade right from this page as well. I tell you, one-stop shop, you can do it all here. So some customers may, especially our early adopters, might be clicking that today um, to upgrade to Washington, D.C. Probably after some testing and planning. Though, after now. some testing. <laughs> I highly recommend that. <laughs> do a lot of testing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh Cool, cool, cool. So uh, as we kind of move down the list here, so we use uh, the clone application uh, to basically copy everything in a database from one instance to another. And cloning typically uses a copy of a prod instance to a pre-prod for testing changes, like preparing for an upgrade. Uh, and cloning comes from the most recent backup. So here we have a lot of information uh, about clones um, and articles related to that. So NLD, tell me what happens if I wanna know more about how a clone works? Yeah, there is a clone basics KB. Uh, I think we have it highlighted on the screen there. And that's going to get you basic information about how clones work. Uh, it's going to give you cloning options, rollbacks, data server configuration, and a whole lot more. So you may want to yeah. check that out. <laughs> Absolutely. And so that's cool. But what happens if I have an issue with a clone or I want to know more information to begin troubleshooting? What do I do there? I would probably start with the clone FAQs because we've compiled the list of the most frequently asked clone questions uh, that we in support get. We even have a clone tips and tricks section where you can probably get the best experience learning how to use the clone process. All righty. All about clones. That's pretty cool. Um, and we have this instance management section, right? And we get to learn about some of the management activities. Um, but I will say some of which should be performed with caution. What are those, some of those activities, Anody? Yeah, so absolutely agree. Um, use with caution, but uh, they can include retiring, uh, renaming, or restoring an instance. For example, you may no longer need a test instance and you have to revert back to a certain point and time. Uh, you can do that here. Uh, and you'll notice that we are very extra cautious here because uh, clearly you probably wouldn't want to do this in a production environment unless there's a significant planning around it. Um, but for any subprods, uh, it's very common. These are very common activities. Uh, a couple of things that you'll notice here perhaps is that a lot of these are automated actions and kind of what ServiceNow is known for is all of our automations. So they get processed as soon as you submit them. And yes, there's a process behind that, of course, and that may take some time, but once it's submitted, it goes through. Uh, some of these activities, however, can only be performed on non-production instances. And that makes sense because, for example, restoring an instance or Z-booting essentially wipes out your existing uh, data and work and restores it back to a previous point in time, or in the case of a Z-boot, resets it all back to factory defaults, sort of using that old terminology. So this is the feature that everybody should use automatically or stay away from? Uh, yeah, Z-booting. <laughs> Z-booting an instance is when you completely reset your ServiceNow instance to an out-of-the-box configuration. All customization, all configuration, most of the data is also going to, well, all of the data is going to be completely wiped away. Now you can understand why we only allow that on a non-production instance. Well, automatically that is. Yes, automatically. Correct. Wow. Um, you know, there's another feature that I like to highlight here, um, and it's the instance troubleshooter. What is this instance troubleshooter and why is this important? Yeah, so the instance troubleshooter application, it enables system administrators to troubleshoot and resolve issues directly in their subprod or production instance without the need to reach out to uh, ServiceNow customer support. And I think we have uh, we have some examples there of what that might look like, right? And uh, yeah, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, well, what are, what are some, uh, okay, yeah, no, that's that's good. Thank you so much. Um, pretty cool. So in addition to like our knowledge base that we talked about and our known error portal, our known error portal is a handy repository, you know, of known errors in the ServiceNow product that have been found or reported. 
why do you think this is valuable? Why do you think this is a valuable tool for our customers? Well, it's important because our known error articles describe possible causes of issues within the system, along with steps to reproduce the issue and available workarounds. And okay. yeah, but so if if you look through, um, the the thing is though, not all known errors will affect all users. So you can automatically show known errors for your production release or just simply browse through the known errors that you subscribe to. Um, the portal is a valuable tool for our customers, but we're always looking for ways to make it better. Um, we did actually hear some feedback from our customers and we've up-leveled the portal experience uh, recently, including new filtering capabilities and the ability to search for articles. In fact, I think many of our customers use this before upgrading. Right. Shameless plug again, since we're talking about the Washington DC release upgrade, make yes. sure you get the known error portal uh, just to ensure, you know, you're aware of any defects that may uh, impact your business, uh, you know, or your, your instance uh, before upgrading, just word of caution. <laughs> um, the automation, automation, automation. And you talked about this a little bit. And what I love about this is that, um, as you probably have realized, that there's multiple ways to do the same thing, right? Um, and so uh, in our service catalog, it's a critical part of how we allow our customers to drive action on their own, obviously, without the help of an engineer. Um, what are some of those top self-service requests that are available? Yeah, so uh, there's a few of them that are probably really popular and uh, quite common. Uh, one of them is activating a plugin request. So plugins are how ServiceNow manages the many extra features of the platform. Um, we can also call them the way you might install an application, um, but not always. It can always say it will be a feature. Most of the plugins can be activated directly from the ServiceNow instance. So for plugins that don't show up on the list of plugins in your instance, you can use the request on now support to ask for the activation. Um, there's also the My IP information. Uh, because ServiceNow can be integrated with items inside your company network, you may need to know what your actual IP addresses that are sending or receiving traffic. Uh, for example, your network administrators may need to add those IPs to a, an allow list. Or in some scenarios, um, you need to know it so that at least it's not on a deny list uh, for IP addresses. And what I like about this catalog is that we use <laughs> our own workflows, service now being an automation and you know workflow company, to automate processes that you, our customers, can run your own common requests without intervention. And I will say I've been here long enough when we didn't have the My IP Information Service Catalog, and those used to be a call from our customers to an actual support engineer uh, or a case and asking for that information, but we don't do that anymore. So because we've learned that this is an easy ask and it can be automated. So if you want to see all the other automations we offer, go ahead and select View All, and it's going to take you to the entire catalog. Wow, wow, wow. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, we're definitely all about automations here. Uh, awesome. Um, one of the last options here that I wanted to just talk about. Um, so it's very important for our customers and our partner administrators to keep their company contact information accurate and up to date on now support. So you'll see that this section provides information related to various account management activities. Uh, penalty, why is this so, so, so important? Yeah, and uh, company contacts are critical for communication with ServiceNow. Uh, for example, company contacts are notified by email if there is an event uh, or issue that's affecting the, the, the company instance or instances. So we strongly recommend having it a minimum of two support administrators at all times in the event of unavailability of either one to ensure that there's no disruption in managing instances in the now support portal. Uh, and it's of course up to our customers to decide, you know, are those 24 by seven contacts or however many that you may want to have. Um, I 
you know, there's probably an impact of not having those. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we did have a situation. We've had several situations where we needed to get a hold of uh, a customer and we'd reached out uh to a contact, but it wasn't the most current contact. So then later on, we got a question from a different contact, uh, probably the more current one, asking, hey, how come you did not contact us? And we were thinking, oh, but we tried. We did try. So you do want to keep those uh, updated. Absolutely. So where do I actually go to manage contacts? You click on the drop down next to your name and select manage account and users. Simple. And that's going to show you all your users, and it's going to allow you to add, remove, or update the contacts as well. And then you can click account contacts, and that's where you can manage your admins, your business, support, technical, and security contacts. Uh, I think we added that in a few years ago. And even more, you can see your support account manager and account executive as well. So definitely meet your team here. Update your contacts. I think that's super, super, super important. Yes. All righty. Well, that that kind of round started beginning to round out our tour here of the Now Support self-service journey. But I want to call out two more additional resources here um, that I believe will definitely help our customers. So the first one is our video tutorials. Um, and did you know that customers have direct access to our Now Support YouTube channel right inside of our portal? Uh, we what's even cooler is that, <clears throat> you know, these are the latest videos that are automatically loaded so they don't have to go and search for it. Um, so you never have to worry about missing out. What are some what are some other things that our Now Support uh, YouTube page can do for our customers? Well, it is the official video destination for ServiceNow product documentation, and that channel is going to help you get started with a product or feature. It'll help understand concepts and processes uh, and help learn how to perform complex tasks. And disclaimer, I've used it myself to figure out something uh, in an area that I wasn't familiar with. So uh, even a lot of us internally will use it because it's just such a vast platform and so many products. So this is where we go to. Absolutely, absolutely. All righty. Um... The other resource that I actually want to call out here is our ServiceNow community. Um, so you always know that they say that two people are, or two is better than one, I should say. And that's really what our community is about, right? And it's important that to know, for our customers to know that we have a community of over 455,000 active users across the globe that are using our community, and it's proven to be a uh, <clears throat> a key play in helping our organizations um, in their overall experience for our customers over the last few years. So, NLD, tell us, what are some of the highlights and benefits of using our community? Yeah, the ServiceNow community is a go-to resource to find answers in our forums and product hubs. Um, you can connect with peers at events, uh, learn more from blogs and articles related to our products and solutions. Uh, whether you're a customer or developer, a prospective employee, or maybe a fan of the brand, uh, even as employees, just know that this community belongs to you. Uh, during our recent refresh of the community website, we introduced product hubs, and these are highly curated collections of the most relevant and important content you will need in your uh, implementation journey. We've broken it down into the four stages most customers go through, like getting ready, configuration and go live, optimizing, and do more to take ServiceNow to the next level for your organization. So, oh, by the way, uh, there are still forums for every product, just in case you can't get your question answered. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I have a question for the audience here. I'm not going to launch a poll because we seem to have a little bit of trouble with that. So it'd be kind of cool if people can just kind of respond here. But um, now that you've seen many of the features here at Now Support Portal, what new feature are you excited to try? Uh, is it the knowledge base, the service catalog? the video tutorials, the community, or simply all of the above. What are you most excited to try? Thanks for posting that, Andy. Feel free to answer in the chat if you like, or 
Yeah. Or what? <laughs> Think about it in your head, I suppose. <clears throat> Anybody excited about any of the features? <laughs> yes, KB that the, had the known issues for upgrades, right? Yeah, so uh, the known error portal absolutely has the issues uh, that you would know about before upgrading. Absolutely. All of the above, Andreas. Appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. All righty. So let's talk about, we've talked a lot about self-service um, and all the things that you can do um, as a customer to be able to uh, get the best out of your support experience. Um, but we do understand that there are times where you, we do have to, you want to engage with our support engineers. And we call that really engaging support beyond self-service. So, Emily, we understand that all issues are not used, are not solved by self-service, but rest assured that we have engineers who are eager, and I mean eager, to help our customers. Um, so the way that you can reach out to our engineer support portal, or excuse me, reach out to our engineers in the support portal is by creating a case. Um, so when it comes to creating a case, right, you see the create a case button down there at the bottom. But when it comes to creating a case, what are some best practices that customers can follow? Yeah, and I'll maybe start with something that's really obvious and maybe a little bit funny, but it, uh, I've been in various support organizations over the years. And uh, um, even here, uh, we've had a few cases that came in and the only thing written was help. <laughs> and that would be it. So uh, the first advice would be be as specific as possible, right? Including um, as much detail as you can. There are really thousands of different features and pages, both out of the box and customized in our platform. And we have uh, multiple teams that I kind of mentioned that I'm on my fifth team right now. Um, we actually have a good eight teams, uh, including some of our regulated language markets. So, and that's covering thousands of different uh, product areas. So, you know, helping us know what page and how to navigate there, those details, uh, attachments, screenshots, error messages, um, steps that were taken to encounter the issue to observe the issue or even to reproduce the issues so our engineers can i you know for one figure out which part of the platform we're talking about and get it to the right team and then being able to troubleshoot it uh, correctly so uh, the other thing is going back to contacts making sure that if it's not just a single person right if there's a, a team of folks who are working on the issue from from you, our customer, yeah, add them to the watch list so that uh, others can be informed. Um, if we need to reach out to somebody else, uh, let us know, right? And in include that. Uh, we at ServiceNow, we do take security very seriously. So uh, we need to have, for example, if um, it can't just be an unauthorized uh, contact who is logging a case or even asking for uh, information about an instance. So if a customer has a contact, you, you want to make sure that that's updated so that we know that it's okay for us to communicate. Um, also consider what the business impact is. We, we want to know, like, how is it affecting you? Um, how many users? What can they not do because of it, right? Um, and then there are some key questions that we're going to want to know. Our support engineers is what we find out uh, from them just reviewing hundreds and thousands of cases. You know, they're going to ask, hey, what is what's what's the problem statement right is, what's the issue is it occurring right now did it occur in the past is it a recurring behavior is it something that you see in a subprod environment can you reproduce it in a subprod is it only for specific types of users groups of users all users one user maybe that one user is your CIO, right? and or maybe it's 10,000 users or maybe it might be a group of 10 people who are uh, quite vocal, whatever that may be, right? You know, who is it affecting? And, and when did when did it start happening? That way we can kind of correlate it to other things that may be going on. And keep in mind, if you need to get in contact with the engineer assigned to your case, the best way to do that is to call us directly if it's very urgent. Um, for the most part, our engineers do give their contact information and you can reach them through the case, right? Obviously, they 
are not themselves. No, no one person is 24 by seven, um, although I've come close to that. However, uh, you can call if it's urgent and another engineer can pick it up, uh, or you can update the case if it's something that uh, our engineer needs to know. Uh, sometimes uh, a lot of our customers have built really great relationships with their account executive. And if you're going through the account executive for a technical issue, you may be delaying, you know, having our support teams getting that visibility. So uh, don't hesitate. Uh, if you can't find the information in our communities and our support portal and our knowledge base, um, and it looks like it's something that is a break fix, reach out to us, create that case, give us those details, make sure your contact information is up to date. And we'll do our best to help you find the relief you're looking for, the solutions. Absolutely. Um, I did see a question come in there um, from Brett. So maybe you could just answer this in 30 seconds. Uh, are support engineers ever signed to one customer? That is a good question. And the answer to that is no, because our customers, we find, have large teams and are 24 by 7. And we train groups because there's just so much in the platform. As I mentioned before, there's literally thousands of different features. And we find that there isn't a single engineer or person today who knows all of it. Not even, dare I even say it? probably not even our uh, original developing founders anymore. Uh, there was a time when, you know, there were developers who knew everything. Um, but I find that today, in order to provide that 24 by 7 support and get that specialized uh, support, we do have teams uh, that do help on a 24 by 7 basis. Absolutely. Thanks, Hannah D. Um we're kind of approaching the top of the hour here. Um, I just want to kind of share with our customers kind of what a typical case uh, flow looks like. So generally after a case is received and the support, uh, it gets assigned to an engineer. Um, it gets routed to an engineer based on the case and the skill set of the engineer that can troubleshoot and support that. And the engineer will obviously work with you to troubleshoot and hopefully resolve the issue uh, once it comes in. However, if sometimes the issue is complex, they would have to maybe collaborate with another team or another SME here uh, in support to pro provide issues. Um, in the event that it goes outside and maybe we need to talk to uh, development or our site reliability team or a platform team, um, there's an option to be able to assign case tasks to get those folks involved. And I highlight this because we talked about the unified engineering approach earlier in this presentation, and this is exactly what it looks like in action, is the fact that we don't have walls between different teams and different groups and even different organizations within support. Um, that will become barriers or hindrances to providing that world-class customer support for you. Um, so that's why we have that unique approach. Um, but always keep in mind that the TSC that is assigned to your case is always going to be your primary point of contact when it comes to uh, uh, resolving your issue. Um, and once we get to that place of resolving the issue, we propose a solution for you. Um, you as a customer can agree if that solution meets the, meets the requirements or resolves the issue. If it does, you can close the case. If it doesn't, then we can continue to troubleshoot and tell uh, we have that issue resolved. So that's kind of what a typical uh, case workflow uh, looks like. The last thing I wanted to cover here is um, let's talk about customer surveys. So feedback here is a gift. And here's support. We love to get feedback um, after cases have been closed out. Annalie, really quickly, can you tell us how important surveys are to support and how we use that feedback? Yeah, surveys help us understand the quality of service our customers receive during their engagement with support. And these questions will ask things like, were you satisfied? Did the assigned engineer understand your issue? Did you get a timely response? And was your issue resolved? Uh, I know that my team, every single one of the managers in our org, read every single piece of survey feedback that we get. So um, you're going to see these surveys uh, through email or it can be accessed through the Now Support Portal. And, and as I said before, we do take action on every single one. So send us good or bad, we read it all. 
Cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much for that. All righty. We are getting right at the top of the hour here. So I want to uh, kind of wrap up our, uh, our our presentation here for today. Uh, but before I do, I just want to uh, give you a couple of key takeaways, and then we'll just kind of jump into uh, some Q&A here. So number one, um, your first key takeaway, or my, my first key takeaway here is make sure you use the Now Support Portal. Again, this is the robust selection of self-service options to help you get the support that you need. Uh, number two, join the community. It's a wonderful resource for our customers to access experts and experienced community over 400,000 people. And then number three, as we just kind of finished up talking about, when you create a case, be thorough, provide details. We love details. Help us help you. Um, I do have some resources here um, that uh, will be provided in this deck as well. Uh, once you have a copy of that, everything that we've co covered in this session here. And I'll open the floor here because we are at the top of the hour here. Um, and I do see a Q&A there. Um, so let's kind of look at our Q&A chat. Um, so I have one question here for you, Emily, and I think you're answering it right oh, now. Oh, you can see that? <laughs> yes. I'll but, go ahead and answer it live then. Yeah, so, go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, So the question is, what's the lead time between closing the case and updating the corresponding KB to lessen the need for escalation or to be able to solve the issues ourselves? So if a case has a unique solution, the KB is usually created within three days and, and it's usually created before the case is even closed. So we have different states in our cases, right? There may be a solution um, and... If that solution is accepted, uh, then the case is closed and a KB, if uh, warranted, will be created within the three days, uh, usually in most circumstances. Uh, if it is during the life cycle and we find that information is useful, uh, a lot of times uh, if the case is if the customer is like, okay, it's, you know, this is, this was it. It solved our problem. Thank you very much. And the case is still open because the customer hasn't closed it themselves. Then we have an opportunity to create the KB, uh, the knowledge base article before the case even closes. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Awesome. Awesome. And I think that's the only question that I saw in there. Uh, just a few reminders here, register for the community, visit our now support uh portal that we've talked about and also visit our we have a youtube channel so visit our youtube channel as well um Analdi, i just want to say thank you so much for joining us and for just sharing all the wealth of knowledge and information for our customers here um, and again, everyone, I want to thank you so much uh, for your participation in this session. Again, uh, this link webinar recorded will be available for you in the community along with this deck. Um, but other than that, Emily, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And I hope that you have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.